Red light has a faster wavelength. Just, ooh, like this. Or blue light, ooh, like this. <laughs> ooh, science. Welcome to the Orphan Red Show. Today we're going to talk about Eratosthenes. We're also going to do some experiments. Proving the flat earth. Ish, kind of. Who is Eratosthenes? Eratosthenes? Well, let's actually start with what did Eratosthenes do? There are differences in the distortion between the orange water and the blue water. Welcome to the Flat Earth with Orphan Red show. Today we're going to talk about Eratosthenes. We're going to show why his proof that the Earth is a globe was wrong. And we're going to do so by doing experiments that you can easily replicate yourself at home. Eratosthenes proved that the Earth was a globe. How did he actually do this? Eratosthenes used geometry. He measured angles. He took measurements of these angles one year apart. Um, he used the Sun and the Moon and Venus to calculate different data and then he put these data together and he drew conclusions. He proved that the Earth was a globe, apparently, or so it said. He proved the distance between the Sun and the Earth, apparently, or so it said. He proved other things, related things as well, apparently. Or so it said. How did Eratosthenes prove the world was round? What did he actually do to come to this conclusion that we still refer to today? Apparently, or so it said. If you set out to talk to people about the Earth being flat, a lot of people will respond to you saying, we know the Earth is a globe because Eratosthenes proved the world was round in 200 BC. So let's now, together, Take a look at what did Eratosthenes actually do, how did he do it, and did he provide us with valid proof that the Earth is a globe? Eratosthenes measured angles of shadows one year apart. Wait, just, oh my goodness, stop. What? <laughs> what is this? This, this is boring. This is really boring. What? What are you doing? Uh, I'm being good. I'm obeying all of the laws and I'm doing what I'm told. Make the videos that you're told to make only on the topics that you're allowed to talk about. It's only in the format that you're allowed and obey the important people that tell you what to do with your videos on your YouTube channel. And this, this mint green sweater, really? Is this the best that we can do for our friends and audience? Uh, uh, oh. You're being a good sheep. Are you a sheep? No, I'm... no. What are you? I'm a kitten. No. No, uh, I, I'm... no, not a kitten. I'm... I'm a lamb. I'm a lamb? I'm a lamb. Well... Okay, maybe you're a lamb. <laughs> but you're not a sheep. What are you? Uh, I... I'm a kitten. Oh, uh, <laughs> are you? What else? I am me. I am me. And I like being me. Me. And what do we know about sheeple? I know what sheeple are. Sheeple believe that our kings and queens and governments know what's best for us and for everyone 
and then they tell us what to do and what not to do and what we're allowed to talk about and what we're not allowed to talk about and then we have to obey them and that's how they keep us and our communities and also our countries safe and protected from the baddies who want to control us and tell us what to do and make us do things that we don't want to do and not let us talk about things in our videos that we would like to talk about. Yay for the uh, monarchy and government. <laughs> Yay for the monarchies and the governments and the top brass that make all the rules and then we have to obey them because they know what's best for us and for our community, for our country, for the world. To make our community strong and credible and legitimate when all the other people that are like us, who like what we do, but the top brass says, no, those people, we don't care about those people that like what you're doing. We only care about the people that like what we're doing. And so you have to do things the way we like it because other people like us also like that. And we're only interested in people like us continuing to like what we do because even though we want everybody to be part of the wonderfulness that we are they're not wanted if they are different or flirtatious in ways that are different from the other peoples that are in charge and who send me messages saying you are not allowed to talk about this. And then they send all their minions, their fans, to send me messages saying, you have to do videos like this, and you cannot do videos like this, and you cannot talk about this, but you can only talk about that. This is Sheeple. Yay, Sheeple. Oh, obeying and being good and normal. You have to be normal um, with the standard of normal. If you want the normal people to take you seriously, then you have to be like the normal people. Otherwise, they will laugh at you and your belief system. They won't laugh at you because you believe the earth is flat. No, they will laugh at you because you are far too flirtatious and that's just terrible. Uh, I, it, uh, okay, finish up this long pauses, slow talking, boring video, but next time, next time we're doing it my way. And then, um, Eratosthenes is credited with establishing the distance to the sun. He was really off. And the spherical Earth, which has since been shown to be oblate spheroid, not a perfect sphere. Also, the distance to the sun that he calculated, he was way off. Not just to the truth, which is the sun is close and small, but even to the established model of today, he was, I think, a hundred times off magnitude, orders of magnitude 10. 20, many millions of miles wrong, and then, uh-huh. Eratosthenes measured angles of shadows one year apart in different cities in Egypt, apparently, or so it's said. But we have to ask ourselves, is the Earth under the same conditions one year apart? Well, yes, yes it is. This year, dividing Eratosthenes' measurements. How many days were there in this year? You might say to yourself, well, there are 365 days in a year, and so why would it be different to 200 BC? Because it was.
Eratosthenes was born in 276 BC, and he died in 195 BC. And so when we look at the length of a year in this era, how different was it from the year that we have today? 200 BC was pre-Julian calendar years. What does that mean? What is a year? We have the Gregorian calendar we use today that has 365.2425 days in a year. This replaced the Julian calendar, which had 365.25 days, not a big difference. That calendar replaces the pre-Julian Roman calendar, which was a lunar calendar, which had 10 months and one year consisted of 304 days. That's a little bit different. In an early version of the Roman calendar, the days between what we know now as December and March weren't assigned to any months. They were intercalary months. The number of days in these intercalary months depended on who was in power. What happened with this lunar calendar? It was replaced. Why were there all these replacements? because the calendars that were being used were so imprecise that the seasonal festivals kept getting off track to the point where the festivals weren't occurring in the seasons that they were celebrating. So harvest festivals were happening nowhere near harvest time and spring festivals of renewal and rebirth were happening nowhere near spring. And so as things drifted far off track, calendars were reformed and replaced, but this took a really long time. In the meantime, powerful people sometimes added months or weeks or days as they saw fit. And one of their primary motives for how long they let a year last had to do with who was a magistrate in the Roman Empire. Roman magistrates had one-year terms, and so the Maximus Pontifex, which was one of the powerful elite members of Roman society, had the power to determine how long a year lasted. And so if the Maximus Pontifex was very pleased with a magistrate, then he might extend a year. He might add extra days or weeks or months to extend the year under the guise of trying to readjust the seasonal festivals to their appropriate seasons. If the Maximus Pontifex didn't like one of the magistrates, he could cut the year short. And so some years lasted up to 445 days. Other years would be much, much shorter than the 300 to 355 day a year that they were used to. If you listen to scientists today, they'll tell you that the average year was of an average length of an average number of days. However, let's look at this for a moment, this average that they keep referring to. If you have three people, ages two, 41 and 53. The average age of these three people is 33. But none of these people are actually 33. In fact, none of these people are within seven years of 33. Well, no. So when you see the two-year-old, that two-year-old is represented by an average age of 33. The 53-year-old is represented by an average age of 33. The 41-year-old is represented by an average age of 33. So is this average age information relevant? Well, no. Is it helpful? Does it give you any idea of what's actually taking place? Well, no. Or is it just a mathematically useful number that can be used to fit nicely into a bell curve. You have to ask yourself these questions because the scientists around you will give you averages and they'll make you think that that's meaningful somehow. But if you don't understand the value of that number, of how it's being used, of what is being done with that information, then you can't establish whether that's valuable information, whether that information means anything at all. Would it help you guess the ages of the other people if I tell you there are a group of people, their average age is 33. Is the two-year-old part of that group? You probably guess no. So averages, accurate, and useful information, well, no.
Things were so out of whack, the calendar was so off that a massive major reform was made and that lasted a century before that also broke down and had to be replaced by a new calendar with new reforms. This is relevant because Eratosthenes made his measurements one year apart, but we can't establish the length of that year. Furthermore, he made his measurements at noon in different cities. He measured sunshine going down a well in his hometown of Syene in Egypt, which is south-ish of Cairo. What he noticed was that at noon, on a certain day, the sun cast no shadows on the walls of the well. So when the sun was directly overhead at the highest point in the sky during that day, he could look down the well and the sun was shining straight down into the well at a perfect 90 degree angle. One year later, in this blurry year, fuzzy, uncertain length of time that we will call a year, he found himself in Alexandria. Alexandria is north and a little bit west of Syene. He guessed, based on whatever calendar they were using at the time, that it was a year later. And at noon on that day, that he estimated was a year later, he measured the angle of a shadow cast by a tower in Alexandria. How did he know it was noon? Well, noon is when the sun is directly overhead, is it not? Well, no. His experiments set out to disprove the idea that the sun was at a 90 degree angle in Alexandria at the same time of year as it was at a 90 degree angle in Syene. Why? Because he was looking to prove a globe Earth. Noon is when the sun is at the highest point in the sky. But how do you know when the sun has reached its highest point? You only know that the sun is at its highest point after it's past that point. Because up until that point, you'll say, the sun is at the highest point it has been so far today. And now it's a little bit higher than that. And so now it's at the highest point it's been at today. And you'll continue to repeat this until all of a sudden you'll find, oh, now the sun is a little bit lower than it was a moment ago. So the moment ago was noon. Now it's no longer noon. And you might say, well, noon was when the sun was directly overhead at a 90 degree angle, casting no shadows. But that's not what Eratosthenes found, and it wasn't what he was looking for. Eratosthenes found that at a certain point during the day, at which he estimated the sun was at the highest point in the sky, a fact that he could not have established until the sun had passed beyond that point, he measured the angle of difference of a shadow cast by a tower. What did he conclude? He concluded that the sun, very far away, very large, was shining down onto a globe Earth. What else would explain this result? Eratosthenes' proof of a globe Earth can also be used equally well to prove a flat Earth with a close, smaller sun. And what does that mean for us today? Well, we're not sure what that means. If the maximum, if the, if the Maximus Pontifex didn't like one of the, if the Maximus, if the Roman elite, if the Maximus Pontifex didn't like, a, if the Maximus Pontifex didn't like one of the magistrates, if you liked this video and this new look, share my video or like it with a thumbs up or, or subscribe to my channel. I make a new video every now and then. <laughs>